welcome to our review on aerobic respiration. So the first thing we need to think about when talking about respiration is basically the needs of an individual. So when we think about how much energy every person needs, it's not the same number for everyone. Now, the amount of energy that you will need is going to depend on things like how old you are, because teenagers are going to need more food than, say, someone who's a pensioner because they're still growing, they're more active. It could depend on your lifestyle. So if you've got a sedentary office job where you spend all day sitting in a chair, you need far less energy than someone who's a builder and up and down ladders and on scaffolding all day. And obviously gender does have a part to play in it because girls will require more iron in their diet just because they obviously have their period every month compared to the boys. So we have this thing called the metabolic rate, which is basically the speed at which your body uses energy. So if you've got a higher metabolic rate, then you're going to need to eat more food to give you that extra energy. If you've got a lower metabolic rate, you need to consume less food to get the energy you need. If you don't consume less food, then we're going to see obviously weight gains occurring as a response. So the first type of food that you need to consume are carbohydrates. Now, carbohydrates are an example of a polymer, which is made from simple sugars. And we use carbohydrates for energy in the body. Now, what we actually do is when we eat carbohydrates, they're going to be broken down into those simple sugar monomers by enzymes called carbohydrates. So to give you one example there in your mouth, when you actually eat things like bread and so forth, which contain starch, that starch is broken down by the enzyme amylase. The second type of food that you need in your diet are proteins. Proteins are still polymers but they are made from the monomer amino acids. Now, the sequence of amino acids is going to determine which protein we're actually making, as we've previously stated. We need proteins in our diet because we use those for growth and repair of our cells. When we consume proteins, they will be broken down by enzymes called protease enzymes. The last type of food that we're going to look at that you need in your diet are lipids. Now, lipids have three key uses in the body. The first one is energy. Second one is buoyancy. So certain creatures that live in the water will have a much higher lipid content in their body to make them buoyant so they float better. And the last one is insulation. So we've got to have lipids in our body to actually protect our organs and things like this and also insulate our body to stop it losing heat. Now, every lipid is made from three fatty acids joined on to a single glycerol molecule. And when we break them down, that's carried out by lipase enzymes. Now, the end result of breaking down lipids is that we will see a decrease in pH because as we release the fatty acids from the glycerol, because they are fatty acids, as the name suggests, it's going to drop the pH due to the acid nature of the molecules. So the first type of respiration we're going to look at is what's called aerobic respiration. Now, this is going to be occurring all the time in all your cells to provide energy, and it takes place inside the mitochondria of your cells. The reason it takes place inside the mitochondria is because they contain the enzymes required for the reaction. One thing you'll notice is that when we look at different types of cells in the body, they don't all have the same number of mitochondria present. What we'll find is that those cells that have a much higher energy requirement, like liver cells and muscle cells, will actually have more mitochondria than those that have much lower energy requirements. When we're talking about aerobic respiration, we're actually referring to a whole series of chemical reactions. Good news is that you don't need to know the entire series of chemical reactions for GCSE. If you go on to A-level biology, prepare yourselves to find out that we're kind of oversimplifying a little bit here. But what you need to know for your GCSE exam is that glucose plus oxygen makes carbon dioxide plus water. So that's our word equation. Remember, don't be lazy and write CO2 if it's asking you for a word equation. Write the full words out. The balance symbol equation is in the middle there. So glucose C6H12O6 plus oxygen, which is O2, 
makes carbon dioxide, CO2 and water, H2O. Now, if they were to ask you to balance aerobic respiration, there's one nice neat little trick that you can remember. And that's that sixes go in front of everything but the glucose. So six, six, six in front of the oxygen, carbon dioxide and water. This is an example of what's called an exothermic reaction, which basically means it's going to transfer energy to the surroundings. And what we find is when we're thinking about aerobic respiration specifically, that's going to produce more ATP molecules, which are the energy currency of our cells, than anaerobic respiration, which we'll look at in our next video. So once our respiration has made this ATP, what is it actually used for? So there are three key uses that you should remember. First of all, we need ATP to move. So it's only through the presence of ATP that our muscles can actually contract and therefore we can move. We need it to stay warm and we need it to synthesize large molecules. All three of those things require energy and energy is always in the form of ATP inside cells. So make sure that with this, we do know both the word and balance symbol equations for our respiration. And we also remember that it is an exothermic reaction. So the only other thing that they could really ask you about are to do with the amount of mitochondria in certain cells. And just remember, muscle and liver cells have more than the other types.